Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of James, and today we want to pick up in verse 9. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to James chapter 1 and verse 9. Now James begins by saying, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Now notice he says brother. He's talking to Christian brothers and sisters here. And he says, So let the Christian of low degree. By low degree, he simply means he who is without reputation. Now, reputation can come in many forms. It can come from social status, and oftentimes, social status will include economic status. And just as it is today, so it was in the day of James's time, in the days just after Jesus' death and resurrection, that people of a lower economic stature were mistreated often by others of a higher economic stature. And not only were they mistreated, but they were looked down upon. And much of this had to do with their family history. They had been poor as a family for a very long time. And although it is true that James is speaking about this here, I think James is tapping into something a little bit deeper. Because what we must understand is that Jesus spoke against money because of the delusion that it creates within us. It creates a false sense of security, and we build our lives around the money and the things that we have. And we know, for instance, in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, it says the multitude of these early Christians believed that they were of one heart and one soul. They deeply loved one another as Jesus had commanded as they loved themselves. And it's important to note here, not only did Jesus command that, but he commanded that because it was written in the laws that God had given to Moses. So this wasn't a new teaching among the Jewish people. It had always been there as a command that they were to follow. And it says of these early Christians, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But now that they were being obedient unto this command, because of the spirit of Christ who lived within them, they held all things in common. And so what is mine is yours and what is yours is mine. And they did this freely with all the good intentions of their heart. And it says in verse 33, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And there was none among them that lacked, because whatever someone else had, if you were lacking that specific thing, that other person wanted you to consider whatever that thing is to be yours. And so no one lacked for anything, because all was shared among them. And all those who were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that they sold unto the apostles. So we see a spirit of freely giving, of sharing, a community where true care and compassion was being shown. And if they were selling all that they had and giving the money to the apostles to use among them as was needed, then it could be said of them, that they were placing themselves in a position of poverty. By the actions that they were taking, they were becoming brothers and sisters of low degree. But they were doing this by choice. And so James says, let the brother who is chosen to do this rejoice in that he is exalted. Well, the reason he is exalted is because he is exalting everyone around him. He is taken a lower position so that others could be raised. And that's what Peter tells us in chapter 5 of his first letter, verse 6. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Become obedient to all that he has commanded, so that he may exalt you in due time. 
Cast all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And so when we read this passage out of James, we have to understand that this is a position that these early Christians were taking, and they were doing this by their own choice. And James is reminding them that there may come a time when you look around you and you see the things that other people have. Don't regret the choices that you have made because God is going to honor each and every one of those choices. But then notice in verse 10, he says, let the rich rejoice in that he is made low. And this would pertain specifically to those who had much, sold all that they had, and shared it within the community that they were now within, other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we have those that are in poverty that have no choice because this has been their life as long as they can remember. And we have those who have been blessed by God, but have taken those blessings and turned them into blessings for others. But all those that are rich, that are financially successful, financially stable, are not always or do not always have the position of heart to do this. And this is why Jesus spoke against money so often because it has such a grip on a man. That's why we are told the love of money is the root of all evil. There's nothing evil about money itself because it depends on how you use it as with so many other things in this life. But it's our desire for the money because of all the things that it can do for us that makes it evil. And that's why James says in chapter 5, verse 1, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that will come upon you. This should bring to mind the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus only wanted the crumbs from the table, and the rich man wasn't even willing to provide that. And it tells us in Luke chapter 16, verse 23, when the rich man died, in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And this is what James is speaking of in chapter 5 when he says, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that will come upon you. But the rich aren't going to do that. They're so caught up in their lifestyle today that they're not thinking about what's going to happen at the end of their lives. What the consequence of their decisions, their actions, and their choices are going to be. Because their focus is upon the here and now. But they would be wise to take James' warning, to weep and to howl, because if they understood what was coming, they would change today. And they would rejoice, as we were told in our text, and they would bring themselves low in the service of others, taking all that they have to try to help provide the needs for others. It's interesting because what we know of as the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, the first opening verses, nine times it says, blessed are those who, and then it fills in the blank. But in Luke, it not only records the blessing for those who are surrendered unto the Lord, but beginning in verse 24 of chapter 6, Jesus not only offers blessings for a faithful life, but he presents warning to those who are disregarding the commandments and the rule of God. And in verse 24, it says, Woe unto you that are rich. Now this word in the Greek, woe, means misery, sorrow, grief be unto you that are rich. For you have received your consolation in this life. You may have heard me say before, and I heard this long ago from another preacher, but it could also be said this way. For the sinner, this is the only heaven they're ever going to see. And for the Christian, this is the only hell they're ever going to see. And so Jesus is basically saying, like Joel Osteen says, enjoy your best life now. But woe unto you for what is to come. But if you are a true follower of mine, this is not your best life now. Against what Joel Osteen teaches, our best life is coming. And if we're doing what he's commanded us to do, this will be a life of suffering because we will take all that we have, sell it, and provide the needs of others. And keep open hearts to always be willing to share what we have with others. 
Well, notice Jesus continues in verse 25 and he says, woe unto you that are full. Now this is talking about a full belly. Woe unto you that are full for you will hunger. What does Isaiah 58 say? That chapter tells us that the people of God, the Jewish people, were so focused upon their fasting as a sacrifice to the Lord. And the Bible says, no, if you were really seeking to honor God in your fast, you would take the food that you're not eating. You would invite the lame, the blind, the leper into your home, those that are poor and destitute and cannot provide for themselves, and you will feed them the food that you are sacrificing. But the people he's speaking of here in verse 25 are indulgent. They're not sharing what they have. And he says, because of this, you will hunger. You are not suffering in this life, but there is a life that's coming where you will suffer. But if you suffer in this life for my name, for my cause, for my kingdom, in providing the needs of others and helping others when they cannot help themselves, great will be your reward in the next life. He continues, woe unto you that laugh now. For there is coming a time where you will mourn deeply and weep. And this is why James says, back to our text, let the brother of low degree rejoice. Let him celebrate in the fact that he is exalted. But let the rich, in that he is made low, let him celebrate and rejoice in that fact. Now, friends, it is obvious that we have needs in this life. But there is a great difference between our needs and our wants. And if we were to be honest with ourselves and we lived only upon our own basic needs, how much more would we have to give to others, to help others, to do things for others that sometimes they cannot do for themselves? Now, we are to exercise great wisdom here because sometimes Helping someone, giving a handout over and over, isn't helping them at all. We not only want to provide fish for them, so to speak, but we want to teach them how to fish. But we always want to keep our hearts open. And we want to be very careful not to allow anything in this life to have a grip upon us. So when it is asked of us, or when it is time to give, we can do so with cheerful and open hearts, as the Bible commands us to do. Well, friends, I know that this might be just a little bit short this morning, but I feel like in my spirit, it is packed with spiritual meat and offers us many levels of obedience. And so I'll end with this. If if you want to feel the full force of what living a life of sacrifice, having an open heart to always be ready to meet the needs of others, Here's the challenge that I'll set before you. Once a month, take the most important thing that you have in your home to you and simply give it away to a stranger, regardless of its value, regardless of its sentimentalism to you. Walk through your home and pick the one thing that if your home was being destroyed by fire and you could only go in and get one thing, what would it be? Take that one thing each month and give it away. And then watch how your flesh will fight against you in doing so. But if you can do it, you will be tapping into a spiritual secret that will open doors within your soul that you did not even know existed. And God will pour blessing in your soul, spiritual blessing from the kingdom of heaven that you will not be able to contain. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful again that you're with us. I pray the Lord Jesus will bless your day. I pray that you've been deep in reading and studying the word of God. If you've been reading through the New Testament with us, then you are at this time finished or just about finished. And we only have about a week until we'll begin once again. Now, if you haven't had the spiritual pleasure and opportunity of doing this with us, simply start at the book of Matthew chapter one, read five chapters a day, And at the end of April, you will have read the entire New Testament. And if you continue that throughout the year, you'll read the New Testament once every two months, meaning that by the time the end of December comes, at this point, if you begin this coming month, you will have read the New Testament five times. And words cannot begin to express to you, friends, how greatly 
This will change your life and deepen your walk with God. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.